Hello everybody watching, this is Walking and Talking with Phoenix with some more foodle for your noodle. And today we are touching on a bit of a sensitive topic, abortions. Alright, so, uh, this weekend, Saturday, I went over to a friend's and I met a whole bunch of people. And I met this young girl. And she would have been around, I think she was 17. She had herself a partner who would have been around the same age, give or take a year. Probably a year older or something. And she was a small thing, you know, very small. She looked younger than her age, you know what I'm saying? Like she could have passed as 14. And it came to my awareness at some point throughout the night, just talking with them, that the young girl was actually pregnant, right? And carrying a much younger potential boy or girl inside. And this isn't the first case that I've come across this. I mean, it's not like, oh my God, that happens. Everyone knows that, you know, people be popping out babies like nothing these days and anyone can get pregnant. You see all ages, you know, all girls, all ages getting pregnant and a lot of them following through with it. Usually under the pretense that, you know, abortion is murder and, you know, they're not going to kill their, their baby. There is no way they're going to kill their child. There's no other option. There's not even, you can't even consider doing that. So, in net, you know, net, uh, consequently, you have to commit to having the child. And then they start preparing themselves for that and saying, I can do it. I commit. I, I am ready to do whatever it takes. Now, to me, this is unnerving because, you know, I read in uh, Conversations with God by Neil Donald Walsh, which is uh, pretty much about a book about written by a guy who just asks himself questions and then answers it using his own intuition. And the idea is that, you know, God is inside us all and all the answers you need for every question lie within you. You just got to tap into the source. And that's what this whole, the premise of this book is. One of the topics he touches on, there's a lot of wisdom in these talks. One of the topics he touches on is how one of the greatest crises of modern day society is that we have this, this great epidemic um, of children having children, you know? And children, you know, people of all ages becoming parents and forging these new identities in a confusing, complicated, very high demanding world. Um, forging new identities when they haven't even finished forging their own identity yet. You know what I'm saying? When they haven't, haven't really found themselves yet, let alone gained good footing and, and consolidated and strengthened their own identity, you know? And they, they have a child and they're going to start guiding that identity and developing that identity when they're still in the middle of their own. Their own. And it's, I don't know, I, I, this, is a, this is a close one for me. This is a sensitive topic for me. Because I've, a few times, a number of times, uh, some some girls that I've done the deed with have fallen pregnant. Needless to say, I don't have any children today. So obviously, you know, abortion isn't an avenue that I simply refuse to take. Not that it was my choice, you know, every time, but half the time at least I had input. Um, and you know, I gotta say it hurts. Like, it's not like an easy task. Each time it emotionally impacted me. Um, not to compare to how it impacted the mother, surely. That's a whole nother level. But I'm just saying that there are reasons why we took those avenues and I have a family member who's had a number of children. Uh, a great portion of those children are no longer with her due to DCP and just some things getting out of control and hard to re gain, regain control of. And really, I can't help but think that, you know, at the age of 15, I believe she was, when she had her first child, that it was too young. And she didn't want to kill it either. And, you know, every few years she'd have another one. I think it was four, four children all up. Three children all up. And it was, she bit off more than she could chew, and she, she heaped on way too much onto her plate. And as a result, um, I've witnessed firsthand and heard stories, you know, of these children suffering and I'm not saying that it's a dreadful existence every single minute. 
there's laughter in the mix, there's happiness, there's love. The mother loves them, but she's still struggling with issues that she hasn't been able to resolve yet. And it hasn't made it any easier now that she's taken on these extra load of raising children and having to meet their needs. It's been hard to focus on herself and resolve all these past issues. And that's been a real big factor. So alcohol has become part of the equation now as an outlet, right? And that's just blowing everything into a worse, uh, you know, extreme. And I can't help but think sometimes that maybe it would have been the wise decision. You know, she's aborted a few times. I won't say how many, but a few times. And maybe it would have been, I'm not, you know, I would never wish for, you know, th th these relatives of mine, these children to have not been born, because that's just something else. But I feel sorry for them sometimes, and I can't help but relate this to every single other person, every single other child that winds up in the situation of having to ask the question, answer the question, and make the choice. Am I going to have this kid or not? Can't help but relate it and think that in some cases, the obvious answer is no. That it isn't wisest, nor is it most practical to have this child if I am unable to support it, or if I'm not even in the right space in my development, the right time in my development, to commit to such a task. I mean, you know, I understand you become pregnant, you know, instinct kicks in, maternal instinct, and you think, you know, I, I will commit. And maybe in your mind, especially for the young ones, I think you'd be a bit naive with this. Maybe in your mind, it's like, yeah, I commit to this. And maybe you are being honest. Maybe you truly are ready to commit. And when you say, I am ready to do whatever I need to do, I'm ready to provide what I need to provide, maybe you mean that. But what I can't help but question is sometimes maybe you simply aren't ready. And maybe you cannot provide, even though you're willing to make that commitment and that choice. Maybe you actually don't have what it takes to provide for the simple reason that you are still developing yourself. And this applies especially to teenagers. They'll be lost in a world of hormones that can kind of cloud the accuracy of their judgment sometimes, the best of times, especially when pregnant. And that's the ba basic crux of all this, as I think a lot of the time that, you know, someone will say, yes, I'm going to have this kid and no one can sway me. I think sometimes that can actually be selfish um, to the child. I think it can be cruel if, you know, it's just going to be born into an existence of struggle and conflict because the parent can't provide. And you know, maybe maybe it'll end up being adopted or maybe another family member will look after it. But really I think it would make more sense, be more considerate of everyone else that might end up looking after your child because you can't, to think about that realistically and not just think, oh, I'm ready, yeah, I'm ready to give it everything, everything it needs. You know, if you're in the street, let's say, you're homeless, you've never had a job and you need a boyfriend, right? To, to feel secure, honestly, honestly, and you know, let's say you don't have much of a support network, then you are being naive and unrealistic if you're telling me you are ready to have a child. You know, right? And you're being selfish in a way. I mean, I understand the instinct, and I don't mean to piss anyone off, even though that's inevitable. But I think putting your own deluded kind of fantasy-like wants and your dream Oh, me and my child, purpose. I don't need the job. I don't need the security. This child will give me everything I need. This child will magically boost me, right, to do everything I couldn't do before because I will have to do it. Relying on that, relying on that and putting a, a life on the line, all right, and complicating it for everyone else involved, I think can be very selfish and childish. And that's the point. Children should not be having children. That's the point of this whole talk. And as immoral as some might see it, to take the option of visiting the doctor or swallowing a pill the morning after, as immoral as that might be, I think there are, this is a gray area. I think there's a lot more deeper levels of immorality 
if you're just born, birthing a child into a world of misery, you know, one that you are not actually ready and you're not actually developed enough to control and to provide for. So really I think sometimes it's about making the least worst decision. Maybe sometimes there's no good decision. Of course abortion is the last option you want to take if you know, you're know you pregnant and it will be going against all your instincts. You'll be shouting in your heart and your head, no, I'm having this child. But really if you can't silence that screaming in your heart and think logically about this and be practical and realistic and really think about it. I mean, once you, once that child is out of you, intact and screaming, it doesn't just stop there. That's the start, in a way, of the end of your life. I'm not just saying your life ends when you have a child, but you literally cut your life in half for a long portion of time. Meaning you've got to commit more than half of your time to that child, more than half of yourself. You won't have time for your development anymore. If you've got problems like my relative does, like a lot of other people do who I see being abusive because they just weren't ready and they weren't, they weren't the right person to raise a child yet, they weren't at that level, then yeah, it's kind of cruel and kind of immoral and irresponsible. So think about it, like you can't turn back time once you make that decision as heroic as you feel making it and courageous, you know? As much as you are passionate about committing, be realistic about whether or not you have what it takes. You have the support network, the basic foundations that you need, and make sure that you're developed enough as a person. You've lived your life enough to the point where you're not going to be, you know, either spiteful and bitter because you're being held back and weighed down and anchored into this place of no possibility because you always have to be there for your kids. You know, also that you don't end up neglecting your kids and still going out and partying because you are still a child and you just want to have fun and you have so much to get off your chest, you know? And I've seen that happen I've seen many children taken away because of that because it turns out all this, this harping about, oh, I'm ready to commit, didn't actually match up to the walk in reality. All that talk didn't match up to the walk and the kids end up being kids and doing what kids do and just growing and making mistakes and being selfish and having fun which isn't the best, best thing to do if you enter the deep end of parenting, being a parent. So just a few things to think about there, you know, and maybe you're religious and it's like, no, no to abortion. But really, I think if you're considering this decision of entering a journey and making a commitment that you cannot undo and you will be stuck in for years and years and years, you know, I think you should put all the thoughts of religious expectations and all these various rules and laws that other people have imposed, various things that you've heard from your parents, from your friends, talking in your ear, telling you what is right, what is wrong. You should ask yourself the simple question, not am I willing to do this, but can I actually do this? And can I plan this? And if you can't even plan it realistically, then it's just gonna flop. And that's tragic if there's a child involved. <laughs>